Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So one of the ways of adding realism to your scene, to your shots, to your animation is by having that handheld feel or that natural movement of your camera. And this can be done in several ways for different 3D softwares. But today we're looking at how that can be done directly in Blender. And for Blender, by default, how you get to do this is by simply adding a camera, putting a couple of keyframes, go over to your graph editor, and then go over to the modifier and start fiddling with the noise modifier. And that seems to be like a good process until you have to do a specific form of motion or you're looking for a particular sort of motion to suit what your project is going for and that might become a nightmare at the end of the day. And that is why today we are taking a look at the Quake Motion Camera add-on for Blender. Now how this one works is very interesting and a huge shout out to Razy for making this possible. Now if you want to get this, link is going to be in the description where you can grab it and working with this is super super easy. So with Blender simply open, what you need to do is you need to go over to edit, go over to preference and install it. Now once you install this, you can literally start doing tons of stuff. Once you press N on the keyboard and you go all the way down, you will be able to notice that you have the quick camera animation and this is not just the only one because you know it has a couple of tabs so these are the tabs for the quick camera you know movement so if i also want to add a camera by default if i hold down shift and tap a on the keyboard you will notice that we have the quick motion camera the quick racing the phone handheld and also tweet so if i click on motion by default automatically you notice that we have a camera that already has a motion happening so we can switch to that and right now, without even doing any of the keyframes, we now have the exact kind of movement that you would want if you just want to have that very simple handheld feel or that very simple quick feel with your camera. Now let's go back and take a look at something else which makes a lot of sense. So if we dive all the way out and let's get rid of this and take a look at the default camera. Now with the default camera, we don't have any animation and you can see that, but what if you already had animation in your scene? So how do you work with that? Now, if you already had animation or if you already have animation in your scene and you would like to have this, you know, to work and probably you've animated your camera, what you can do is simple. So for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to add a keyframe right there and move this one right over to this point and just pretend that we have an animation going like so. Now let's bounce this all the way back, select this object, press zero on the keyboard, press the playback button to see what we have. Very simple, very linear, we like it. So how do we add the quick motion? Adding the quick motion is as simple as selecting this, right clicking and adding the quick add motion. And once you have that, this looks even way better than what we had before. Now, for those who like to make changes, you want to change how this works, you want to change some stuff, you don't really like the whole movement stuff, you want to get it more exaggerated, less exaggerated. Okay, so how you can do that is simple. Once you have this selected, go over to the Quake Motion Camera. Now, down here, you can change the level of vibration that you're going to have. Okay, and then you can click on Add. And that way, you have that there, and you can press the playback button, and you can have that going. Now you can also choose to increase the level of vibration that you're going to have and then you can click on add and you're going to have that there and this way you have something going for you. Now for those who would like to play with the presets, okay, you want to play with the preset, you want to change some stuff, you can also do the same thing. Go over to the preset section, you can add a couple of things. So maybe you just want, um, let's take a look. Maybe you just want some sort of little shake. Okay, add the preset and there you have it. Press the playback button. Very little shake like you can have right there. Bounce this all the way back. You want to have something more chaotic. Let's add some chaos camera right there and add the presets. Press the playback button and you can see we have a little bit more chaos happening within our scene. And we can do all of that for the other ones. So maybe you want to have some vibrating camera. Click on the add right here and you can also have this happening for you. Now imagine how much things that you can create with just this motion, how much, you know, realism you can add to your shots, especially those trying to do some sort of racing cars, or maybe you're trying to recreate some feeling of a handheld device. This is definitely going to come in extremely handy. Now with this one said, there is also a mild form which you can add and you can also add an extreme one. Now the extreme one is more for like explosion, the mild one right here is more like for a car chase and stuff like that and you can make all of those changes and you can implement them directly on your camera. So if you do that, you can have that going and you can see that we have that camera movement for a racing car, stuff like that. More like something that Ian Hubert had done before, you can also see that in action right here. Now for those who would now want to just simply have 
camera shake maybe you just want to have camera shake all right you don't want to do all of the motion thing you just want to have camera shake or probably you want to have a camera shake after a motion so what we can do is simple so let's take a look at that and we're going to select the little shake so adding this little shake right here we're just going to click and add that and you can see that we have this mild movement all right so at a point like this maybe at frame 40 we want to have a shake okay we want to have some sort of camera shake because all we've been talking about is the camera movement so what we can do select this right click and we can add a shake you can also choose to add a shake by going over here and applying a shake but let's simply do that right here and add a shake now the shake that we have here is a default shake and what that means is once we have this playback from here at this point we have that shake now this shake can be changed at any point in time so you can also change the shake if you want to have like an earthquake kind of shake all right select that click on apply and there you go press this all the way back press the playback button and you have an earthquake earthquake rendering kind of shake all right now if you also want to have a different kind of shake right here you can click over here and also make that shake maybe with like a boss shake for example click on add shake and then you have that going now some of you guys might also be saying what if i would like to have that movement have the shake and then have more movement as at this point you don't get to see that how you can do this is simple if you want that movement to continue after the shake so let's select frame 60 simply select the camera one more time right click and add motion and once that happens you get the shake then you have the motion continuing so this is more like the kind of things that you can do with this and you can also choose to play with whether you want it to be stable extreme chaotic or mild you can play with the duration how much duration that you want these things to work and you can also you know fiddle with these things and get some pretty cool result out of it meanwhile once you also go over to the camera section right here, you can also do some sort of camera switching. So you can switch from one camera to another and at the same time, you can choose to set some stuff that your camera can track. Now, how does this work? Now for this one, we're going to go ahead and get a brand new scene. Okay, so we're just going to take a look at the scene and for this, I will select this all the way up and let's add a keyframe right here that looks good and let's move this one all the way to this point so we have this model right here and we're just gonna move this all the way to frame 40 40 looks nice and we're just gonna bring this all the way down so let's make sure that we are looking at this right there so we have this from there all the way down and that looks super cool let's turn this off make sure that we're looking at the camera let's select that camera press zero on the keyboard just to get this and then for this one we would right click and add a camera movement and you can see that we have this camera movement nothing you know sexy is going on press n on the keyboard go over to quake all right go over to quake go right here click on this button and then click on cube all right once we click on the cube click on set track and automatically that should be able to track that object and once we go back and press the playback button you would notice that it's following the object all the way from up down so at this point you can now simply track whatever object that you're working with so for those who like to zoom the camera maybe you want to zoom this camera whenever you're working with your shots of course you can also choose to do this we can set the period that we want the zooming to happen you can change the size you can clear some stuff so maybe we would like our camera to zoom back after about let's say five frames or maybe 10 frames so what can happen is once we have that going we're just going to go ahead and click camera zoom out so after 10 frames, our camera is going to zoom out. We can change the size that we want the zoom in to be as well. So maybe we want this to happen at 20 and then we want this to happen really quick. So we can have this zoom out really quick and we can have even way more. So at this point, once you press your playback button, you can see you have that animation going there. Now, the same thing applies to both switching of your camera. So if you have multiple cameras, you can add that switching right there. And for those who like to also add keyframes, maybe you want keyframes to apply at several points. You can also choose to do these things right there. Now, some of you guys might want to also go ahead and add some shakes after setting durations. You might want to also do that one from here. Maybe you don't want to select a particular frame and simply right click and go through and add that. You can also choose to do these things from this point. And of course, you already know that we have a couple of other tools right here, like the depth of field, which you can pick and also the camera lens. But nonetheless, you have tons of stuff right here that can get you up to speed. Let's take a look at the movement. So if you're looking for advanced shake or you're looking for advanced movement, you can 
actually add way more advanced stuff so let's say we're at frame 20 and i click on add motion so it's going to add way more advanced movement right now i can click on this button which goes all the way up and i can change the number of vibration that i want if i want this to be stable mild or extreme i can make those changes increase the strength and also change the direction so i can make these changes right now press the playback button to get a different result and i can also choose to maybe increase the vibration so let's make this vibration a little bit more and let's increase the strength okay maybe something like that and maybe we can scale this like something like so move this all the way back press the playback button and you have yourself something like this that you can work with one cool one which is more like a template tool that you can get once you purchase this is the car driving and you can see that we have this one going to actually make this even look better let's go ahead and throw in that atmospheric sky and take a look at some of the things that we can do with it and we can also play with the density and you know we can play with this and also play with the elevation play with the azimuth as well just to have some sort of feeling to the things that we can achieve with a tool like this so once you have this you can create some nice camera movement and add some more dramatic feeling to your scene so this is more like it for those who like to get this you can simply go over to the link in the description and take a look at this tool and for those who also want to read more about the documentation you want to see some stuff you want to play with it there is a couple of tools that that out there and this is quite documented properly so you can also find a lot of cool options and stuff that you can play with directly here so tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace